What's going on everybody, Matt with Lathe Media, and in this video we are going to be talking about the Lathe modifier inside 3D Studio Max. Uh, this is 3D Studio Max 2021. Uh, for those of you who are wondering what the Lathe modifier is, if you're new to 3D modeling, just hold your horses a little bit, and if you're moving from a different 3D modeling package into 3D Studio Max, you may also know uh, this modifier as a different name, i.e. Revolve. If you're coming from, you know, say, an engineering program like Inventor, or if you're coming from, say, Maya. Either way, it all does the same thing. So what I'm going to do here is I have just a simple plane with a reference image as a material. I'm going to go ahead and hit Top View, and I'm going to change this down to ortho just so it makes it a little bit easier you don't have to you know teach their own your decision but any hooser uh we're gonna come over here under the create tab in the panel go over to shapes it's gonna be on splines and then just come down to here bleh, come down here to line now i'm gonna Kind of eyeball this but we're going to take approximate center for our starting you know point here drag this out and i'm just single clicking this um, now you can click hold and drag if you want a bezier uh, a curve in here uh, similar to if you've used um, affinity designer or you know adobe illustrator I'm not going to make it look too fancy, uh, but I do have an outside edge of what that lampshade looks like. Now, it's not just for lampshades. Um, I kind of glossed over this earlier in the video, but basically, uh, you know, bottles, cross section of wheels, um, you know, little like uh, pawns for like chess piece, you know, pawns. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can use lathing for um, certain kind of terminal connectors and whatnot. It, it all there, there's a very large usage that you could use, uh, and it's a lot easier than you know taking multiple cylinders and then you know poking or pinching and pulling things out or pushing them back in in order to get this shape. So from here, what I'm going to do is come up to my modify tab up here and then come down to my modify list and I'm just going to go down here to lathe now as you can see right off the bat it looks funky do not digress we're going to come up here to this little arrow next to lathe hit it and then go down to axis allows us to adjust and turn that back on there we go. Allows us to, you know, define our axis of where it's spinning around. Uh, that's kind of where they, you know, use the name, i.e. metal lathes, wood lathes, where you're basically spinning an object. So, as you can see, it's kind of rough. We've got a hole up top. That's actually not that big of a deal. I would probably use that in... Uh, change this back to perspective. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, as you can see, it, I mean, it is a little dodgy, a little rough, a little polygonal, and that's not a big ordeal. You can actually change your segments over here. Uh, you don't really have to deal with a whole lot of these features. I mean, it, you can have it set out as patch or nerbs if you want. Uh, that's going to be a completely... Eh, hmm... This is actually why I'm moving away from 3D Studio Max. I've been inundated with application errors. Just one moment, please. Okay, now where was I before 3D Studio Max or so rudely decided to give me the middle finger? Ah, yes. Uh, so you can actually use different outputs, whether you want a patch mesh or NURBS. Uh, I will, you know, that's a different video. Definitely not this one. Uh, I'll turn off the reference image here. As you can see, it's kind of chunky. It's kind of, well, first off, let me check that back to 32. It's still kind of chunky. It's um, it's not bad, but it looks exactly, well, it looks really plain. 
so what, what I'm going to come up here and do is go back to our modifiers and go down to shell. Now what that allows us to do is give this a little bit of thickness. We have some artifacting up here. Okay, so the top looks fugly. Uh, so what I could do is I can come down here to vertex. There we go. And I could pick this guy and I could drag it in a little bit. And then come back up here to lathe. And you know what? For the sake of argument, I'm going to say that I want that hole to be bigger for the actual uh, bulb assembly to you know, screw into. So, yeah, we'll, we'll stick with that. So, we have, uh, that's basically just how you go through and, and tweak it if you want to tweak it. Uh, so we have our lathe and shell, and if you wanted to go a little bit further, and you could you can move some of these. Uh, you have an inner, and then you also have an outer. Kind of self-explanatory um, of what it does, how many segments you wish to use. Uh, you don't have to worry about beveling edges, not for anything like this. But now that you have your shell, We'll go ahead and go a step further and go down here to Turbo Smooth and make it quite a bit smoother, quite a bit nicer and neater. But that's about it. Um, it I hopefully that was enough information to get you guys going. A lot of this is just kind of playing with the settings um, to get what you want, but you do need a little direction to get there to begin with. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. Um, if this was beneficial to you at all, hit the thumbs up. Give the video a like. I'm trying to branch out these videos a little bit with just basic stuff that you may come across. Um, whether you're starting out or you're moving to different software, what have you. Uh, because sometimes you don't want you know, a 40 minute long video on how to model a you know a complete lamp shade or a complete lamp assembly you just need to know how to revolve the shade and that's all you want so that's why i'm breaking it down like this um if you have any questions concerns comments drop them in the comment box below if you found this helpful at all go ahead hit the thumbs up button um but yeah that's all i have uh, and until the next video i guess i'll catch you guys later